After the Orange Bowl in 1944, LSU would dominate the rest of the decade, winning four of the next five. But in 1954, Texas A&M would get a new coach, Bear Bryant. Coach Bryant and the Junction Boys would lead the Aggie program to a 1956 Southwest Conference Championship. The star halfback for the 1956 Aggies was John David Crow, a young man who Coach Bryant had recruited from North Louisiana. I guess John David Crow would be the, uh, the, the first uh, the guy that I would think of you know, is playing for, for Texas A&M. John David Crow arrived at Texas A&M about the same time I arrived at LSU. And of course, I was, uh, I was chagrined to find out that the best, one, the best athlete in, in Louisiana that time was leaving to go to Texas A&M just the time I was arriving. John David Crow would go on to win the Heisman Trophy in 1957, and Bear Bryant would beat the Tigers twice in 55 and 56. One of the defining characteristics of this series was that it was usually the first game of the season for both schools. This meant that dozens of players who would go on to become legends, whether they wore purple or gold or white or maroon, played their very first college game as part of the Aggie-Tiger rivalry. Well, it, it was my first home appearance as an LSU Tiger because freshmen couldn't play. So it was our sophomore year. Uh, A&M, we knew by reputation, was an extremely good football team, well coached, and uh, one of the major players in the Southwest Conference at that point in time. Uh, in the course of the ball game, there was a uh, uh, player that broke loose on, on a particular play, and I was uh, on the field defensively and uh, had to backpedal, it seemed like, forever and tried to work him towards the sideline and then uh, the blocker missed and I was able to make a tackle. And uh, so it saved a touchdown at that point in time and we went on to win. In 1960 and 1961, the Tigers, led by Coach Dietzel, would beat the Aggies in both tries. But after the 1961 season, Coach Dietzel, who had flown 12 missions in the South Pacific, had decided to return to his roots and accepted the coaching job at West Point. At the end of 61, I had done everything you could do, and there wasn't anything else for me to do here at LSU that we hadn't done. And we have the whole team coming back for 62. I mean, we don't lose anybody. I'm not going to leave them in the lurch or anything like that. Coach Dietzel picked his defensive coordinator and closest friend, Charlie McClendon, to take over the reins as Tiger coach. Coach Mack would go on to coach the Tigers for 18 seasons, and his roots as a defensive coach would always remain prevalent in his coaching philosophy. He was just, he was a defensive freak. I mean, he just, he loved holding people to zero. I mean, he wanted, he wanted a goose egg. And we had a and we had a goose egg up on that going late into the fourth quarter. We beat them pretty good. We had 35 nothing. the second team was in. Back in those days, you could only substitute two players at a time. So they had all the first team defense off the field. Somehow they threw a long ball down and got within scoring distance. And uh, Coach Max started going crazy because he wanted to shut them out. And he started hollering at Coach Hamley. He said, Doug, get him in, get him in, get him in. And, and Coach Hamley, who was the defensive coordinator, was trying to figure out which strategic players he wanted in first because he could only put two at a time. You know? So he was trying to get the linemen in, the linebackers in. And Coach Max going nuts, and he's just hollering and hollering. And Coach Hamley says, Charlie, will you just give me a minute? And Coach Mack turned around and looked at me and no one in particular. I mean, he's just kind of looking. He said, somebody help me. <laughs> what have I gotten into here? They, I did go back in. We couldn't stop them. I, uh, they, they wanted to score so bad. No one wants to be shut out. But 30-point blowouts were certainly not the norm for the rivalry during the late 60s. In fact, just three years earlier in 1966, the Aggies and Tigers had played themselves into a 7-7 tie. We had just lost our quarterback the week before. Uh, I think we were favored to win. We didn't have a quarterback and uh, ended up 7-7 uh, tied. We pretty much dominated the game, but we just didn't have the offense. We, we lost our quarterback, Nelson Stokely. Uh, Nelson was our quarterback uh, back in 66. He got hurt in the uh, second game of the year. And in 1968, the Aggies and Tigers would play a classic that would be decided by a crazy stroke of fate. It's hard for me to remember all the details, but I remember we lost 13 to 12, I think, in 68. And late in the game, late in the fourth quarter, we were on the two yard line. Uh, we ran an option that got pitched out and fumbled out of the end zone, which meant LSU got the ball on the 20. 
and of course we thought we could have won real easy even with a field goal, much less a touchdown. So we came close one year.